In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the orange and teal cinematic look that everyone seems to just love. And we're gonna do this in Premiere Pro without any LUTs at all. So let's jump into it. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. Now, orange and teal seems to be our most used search term on the website when people are looking through our LUTs. You can see all of our LUTs by clicking up here or down in the description below. But actually, we're gonna do something a bit different today. I'm gonna to show you how you can achieve this orange and teal look without any LUTs at all. Um, so we're gonna do this in Premiere right away. So let's jump into it. So we've got our footage on the timeline. And the first thing that you should do is add an adjustment layer because if you're color grading one scene that has the same lighting and look as another, you can just drag the adjustment layer over the shots instead of adding a look to each shot individually or copying and pasting it to the entire timeline. Just make sure all of the shots under the adjustment layer are corrected first. And I'll go over how to correct things further down in this video. Now to add an adjustment layer, go over to here, click new item and click adjustment layer. Click OK and then drag it over your footage. So let's get into some quick details. Open your Lumetri scopes here and make sure your parade and waveforms are visible. To do this, right click and then just click on them here. Now here's a very basic way to understand these. Check if all of these three sections on the parade are absolutely level. Now this is to show you that you're correctly white balanced. If not, then you'll have to play around with the temperature and tint to get them level in your basic correction. Or if there is something white in your shot, you could use the white balance selector and click something white and this will balance correctly, just like so. Now the white balance selector is super handy and this is actually why it's quite useful to take either a white piece of paper with you or a gray card. Just hold it up before you start shooting and then you can select it and then carry on with your editing. Next up is your waveform. This essentially shows you the lightest and darkest parts of the shot. All you need to understand about this is the numbers on the side. Never go past 100 with your exposure, highlights or whites, as this is then overexposed. For example, when I turn the exposure up here, it's blowing it out. The 100 level is really to show you that you're going over, so just keep below that if you're using Rec. 709 footage. And the other thing to understand is never go below zero with your shadows and blacks as this just simply crushes them. But these are the fundamentals. Now in this shot, there aren't really any dark parts so we can ignore this going below at some parts. If you find your dark areas look a little washed out, you can bring them down to help bring back some nice dark depth. Really handy when filming evening shots or low light to get rid of a bit of noise too. Now let's go into curves. Curves are really simple to understand. The top is highlights and the bottom is shadows. And then the middle is essentially your midtones. The white is the master curve. So this affects every color together. And then you have the red, the green, and the blue, which isolates those colors. So for example, if you want to add some red into your highlights, you would do this and just take it up. And then of course, if you want to take them out, you would slide this down. Now you may have heard of an S curve and that's what we're going to be using here. So go to the master curve and then create an S shape just like so. Now just do it until your shot looks good to you. Sometimes just a very subtle S is just perfect. Just to show you how we're doing so far, I'll click them on and off and you can see here it's looking really good so far. Now scroll down and you also have all of these other options here. They do look a little bit confusing, but they are actually really simple and really effective. So hue versus saturation basically lets you isolate any color in the shot and either add saturation by dragging it up or desaturating by dragging it down. To do this, add two points between a color that you want to isolate, then add one in the middle and do it like this. Or a better way, is using the eyedrop tool and choosing the color in your shot. So for this shot, I'm going to select the grass and turn this up. I think that looks really great. 
Now, if you want a full in-depth video about curves, check out the link up here or in the description below where we went into more depth about curves. Now, I'm going to jump into the hue versus hue. And what this does, it lets you pretty much change the color of a selection in the shot. So I'm gonna select the sky and make it slightly more teal to work with this teal and orange look that we're going for. Now, go into your color wheels and match and add some teal to the shadows and give some orange to the midpoints. Now, I'm going to add some orange to the highlights as well to give a warmer look. Now, you can use these to turn up or down the shadows, midpoints and highlights. So I'm going to turn the midpoints and shadows down a little bit. Now, just add a slight vignette to draw focus to the subject and give it a cinematic feel. And there you go. I'll turn everything on and off again to show the difference. And I think that looks great. And remember, we haven't used any LUTs or basic correction. So there you go, I think this looks really good. And of course, you can now go into basic correction and tweak these to boost up some sections and add more saturation. And I think the best part about using an adjustment layer is if your next shot seems a little underexposed or overexposed, you can click on the actual clip, not the adjustment layer, and then edit the basic correction so that they match without changing the other shot, just like so. And there you have it. Now, if you want to add some cinematic black bars, you can do this in two ways. The first way, and the proper way, is changing the sequence setting to 3840 by 1634. If you want to see a video explaining aspect ratios, click up here as we have a video all about that. The second way is you can add an adjustment layer and then use the crop tool and then change the top and the bottom to 12. However, we're going to do this the proper way, so I'm gonna change this to 1634. And there you go, we've got this cinematic look in just a few steps. So I hope this video has helped you, especially if you're new to Premiere Pro. It just shows you within a few minutes, you can get that orange and teal cinematic look by just doing a few minor adjustments and using that adjustment layer. Now, if you do want some more LUTs, if uh, you're maybe going for some different looks and you haven't got the time, check out our LUT packs that you can see up here or in the link in the description below. But anyway, thanks for watching and make sure to check out our other Adobe Premiere Pro videos. We've got a ton on this channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.